Yes, remember this video. Here he is in his office. Look at this place. So this was nuts. And we were watching it. We were breaking it down. We were going through every little item and trying to figure out what it was. Kind of makes sense now. We didn't know what this hustle art was going to be. Remember, this was a big mystery. and We kept guessing, is this artwork behind his desk? Is this like a picture of Tony himself? Because I've seen Tony wear, back in the day, Tony used to wear these Argyle, what do you call this? This design. Tony used to wear like little sweater vests and cardigans that have oh, this design yeah, on that's it. That's right. So we thought, oh my God, he's so gaudy, so tacky. He must have blown up and got some hustle art made of himself. And we were guessing, I think another one of our, what, what other guesses did we have of who this was here? I don't think we, art? we couldn't sure. figure it out, right? Okay, so we couldn't figure it out. Thank God. Uh, I got a message from a, a viewer. They said, I know what art Tony Hinchcliffe has behind his desk on the drywall. I know because I have it myself. You're not going to believe this. He sends me this picture. And it is. Hustle art of Tony Soprano. I didn't want to say, but I think I guessed it was Tony Soprano. I just didn't want to Real, spoil it because I remember oh. saying that word. Oh, okay. So look at, you can see here, that's what we saw from his, oh no, that's the kid's house. But there it is. So it's a big version of this. <laughs> Tony Soprano split up into three. Where do you get this hustle art from? Of Tony it Soprano. Was so there it was. huge. He had to make it three. Isn't that nuts? Isn't that tacky? How do you not be embarrassed? Well, it turns out Tony thinks the Sopranos are awesome. Should we play uh, Tony? I know on... what's better, the Sopranos or, or uh, Howie? We can start. There's both. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Here, let me quickly read that. Let's see the Tony. I think we should do this uh, Sopranos one. He was on the Sopranos Kids podcast. Let's show a little bit of this. We could go through this one, and then we'll do the next one. I'll do a couple of the Howie. Okay. Yeah, I definitely want to do the Howie. Oh, I definitely want to do the Howie. The Howie (laughs) ones are great. So here's Tony. Look, he's on the Sopranos Kids podcast. Tony Hinchcliffe. Let's go to his first lie. He starts off the show with a lie, which is never a good thing to do. Starts off the show with a blatant lie. We're going to show you this. Uh, Two minute. Zero, two, oh, oh. Yeah, hold on. My, uh, uh uh-oh. Sorry, my note uh, went away. There it is. Okay, what was it again? Uh, 0200. 0200. Okay, here we go. Uh, Listen to this. Starting off the podcast with the Sopranos kids. So now we know he's a big Tony Soprano fan. I mean, imagine to have a painting of Tony Soprano in your home. Imagine. In any room. Uh, To have any Tony Soprano related anything in your home is nuts to me. Uh, You're not up to speed. I think Tony Soprano is as cringe as it gets maybe that's because of the anthony cumia impression that i've been hearing for the last 20 years but uh to me oh my god and these burberries you know they sell these at sunglass hut these aren't the good ones so he went to sunglass and he got these burberries okay all right let's hear him open the podcast with a lie real deal though because you, you were so kind First but then we were like you know, put it out there like you should come on our podcast, you know, which is like such a douchey thing to do. Like I, I almost hated it when it came out of my mouth. But literally <laughs> it was less than a week ago. And here yeah. you are. That's so nice of you. Yeah. And I don't even do people's podcasts. I'm sure. I'm not, I don't, it's not even a thing. But but here you are. Oh, wait, only on. only when Rogan's. You up, when and, you showed up here, you were like, I've been here five times because I did Danny Brown. I did Dr. Dre. <laughs> right. I did YMH. You well, well, well friends, that's a little friends. bit different. But. So he's trying to be like me. Mr. I don't even do podcasts. So it's actually an honor I'm here with you guys because I never do podcasts. Oh, yeah. Go to YouTube. Type in Tony Hinchcliffe interview. He's been on 16 podcasts in the last month. All of them. He's done everyone's podcast. So I don't know what this business is about. He never does podcasts. I'm glad the Soprano kid calls him out right here. And I don't even do people's podcasts. I'm sure. It's not even a thing. But 
but here you are. Oh, wait, only, hold on. Only when, Rogan's you showed, and... when you showed up here, you were like, I've been here five times because I did Danny Brown, I did Dr. Dre, <laughs> right. I did YMH. Well, you well, well that's a little friends. bit different. But <laughs> yeah, of course. And it's here, so that's the only thing. Oops. And I love Danny, and I never <laughs> got to hang out with I use the Dr. Drew episode as What like about all act. the other podcasts? Do you have a good excuse for that? And this isn't a good excuse. <laughs> a horrible. Well, I Danny Brown because I love Danny Brown. Oh, okay. That's still a podcast. <laughs> On the same network. So you're starting off. She knows a liar. She's been lied to every minute of her life. Remember Johnny Drown? Wait, who was she dating? Turtle. Remember what she went through with Turtle? That's where I know her from. Entourage. Same. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I didn't watch The Sopranos. wasn't allowed. I had a very strict, 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 strict college life. Okay, uh, let's see. I don't do podcasts. Should we go to 21 minutes here? Sure. Check this out. And what would that be? How do you convert that? 2100. 2100. Perfect. Oh, it's such a short show. I love a short show. Okay, listen to this one. So Tony loves The Sopranos. You're like, oh, I can't. Yeah. Was there shit that happened? I mean, I'm Anthony. That's and, what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 You yeah. Can, you're not going to be like, every, I hate that Every kid. Tony is an Anthony. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and my dad's, I mean, stupid, but my dad's middle name was Anthony. His father was an Anthony. So I'm technically almost a fucking Anthony Jr. Junior. Right. Wow. And the same exact age as you. We're like a year apart. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I'm watching. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. But now, not annoying. If anybody was annoying... I, I, there what wasn't. Was he, does he say more about that? Wasn't he going to say something? Because this note is Tony is Anthony Soprano. Here, go to twenty two oh oh. Okay, here's the part. Yeah, what they're going to talk about, about where he talks about how his family was identical. Yes. Yes. Is that this? Um. Twenty two. Go to okay. Go to twenty three fifty two. Twenty three fifty two. Pop that in. Listen to this. <laughs> Were there? Was, so was there shit? that happened in your life and you were like, and then you saw it on Sopranos and you were like, that's exactly. Well, I, there was a, I had a teacher back in the day. No, uh, not this. He set it up. Maybe we just didn't code it where he clear his day says my upbringing was exactly the Sopranos. Yeah. We would watch the show and I'd be like, is this us? He claims his dad was a big guy in the mafia. Yes, but he tells the story all the time. Yeah, no, Go to I know. 920. Okay, let's see. Uh, there we go. And, I mean, uh, he never tried to make. I think one of the genius things about David is that he never tr ever tried to make any character look good, sound good, be good. You know what? It was almost like the opposite. Like he was trying to make you the most human right. and flawed person that's ever spoken. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting to find out that, um, you know, uh, that they casted so many like normal humans from New Jersey yeah. and everything. Well, Tony yeah. Sirico had done like jail time. Like he was, oh, yeah. a legit, and that's like when people say like, I wish I could have met James Gandolfini. I'm like, yeah, you, you know, you would have loved him. He's so nice to me. When people say like, I wish I could have met Tony Sirico, I'm like, you did. Yeah. Like yeah, that you watched 80 hours of his life. Like that was him. He was never, we were, so one of my favorite stories about him, we were at a, a charity event I'm looking time. for where it starts. Yes, so. this is uh, not what I wanted I to show I didn't know you. that you wanted this part. Sorry, no, that's sorry, okay. Sorry. Tony's story about his mom and dad controlled the schools. Do you remember the first time you snitched? I thought him? everybody knew all of Tony's stories I don't think so. his mafia past. Tony's dad that he was rich. Okay, just give me another one here from this list that would be good to move forward from it. Okay, so Let's pretend if they you know don't know part. this, Tony always talks about how he grew up in Youngstown, the most dangerous street on the yes. block. and that These his... unbelievable <laughs> stories about his past that I'm sure have additions to them. If you want to show one of the additions examples, you can go yeah. to 2352. Okay, let's see what happens here. Listen to this. <laughs> Were there, was, so was there shit that happened in your life and you were like, and then you saw it on Sopranos and you were like, that's exactly... Well, I, there was a, I had a teacher back in the day, um, Mr. Gil Martin. I'm pretty sure he's dead now, so I can talk about this. Um, <laughs> R.I.P. But I was making a joke because I was. I mean, you, you're pretty sure he's dead, so you could lie about this. <laughs> Listen to this lie. And imagine an insane class clown, nonstop, always in trouble, always like signing a nerd. conduct card. Everything, every 
fucking day. And so the teachers hated me. And Mr. Mr. Gilmartin really hated me. He felt like he wanted to teach me a lesson. So anyway, one day I was making a joke, oh a blatant <laughs> joke with all my buddies about, yeah, my dad jerked me off the other night, something like that. And he goes, oh, he did? I go, no, I'm kidding. He goes, no, you know what? You said that. You're going to learn today, my buddy. And so he goes to the principal and says, Tony made a, well, he didn't, I think he said, I don't know if he said that I made a joke about it. But anyway, he goes, Tony said that his dad jerked him off. No, uh, you're disturbing the class. You know, this is like Matt Reif's airplane thing. You must follow the rules of school. <laughs> well, what these kids think this is? It's like a game to them, this school. You respect the teacher. You're causing a disturbance. You listen to your teachers. Okay. I was always uh, big into my teachers and stuff like that. You follow the rules at school. And look at her. Because she followed all this. She doesn't like this. This is cool to you that you're yelling out your dad jerked you off. She doesn't get that humor. Okay. She doesn't understand this world she's been thrown in with YMH and Tom Segura. She doesn't understand any of it. Okay. Listen to the additions, though, that are going to come from this unbelievable story coming up. We have to call children's <gasps> services. And let me remind you, my dad and me, we were, it was a secret thing. Oh, wait, this isn't about you being a class clown and being a jerk up. The teacher thought you were admitting to being molested by your father. Okay, that's great. Well, hey, I'm glad he is looking at, and you probably were jacked off by your dad. You probably talked about, because you look and act like you were molested by dad. You know, and he's always talking about all this illegal activity. Yeah, you said your dad was, was in the doing. mafia. If he's going to break the laws of that the mafia breaks, he'd clearly break the laws of pedophilia. So, so your dad jerked you off. You told people at school because you didn't know that that was bad. You know, you thought that was nice. You enjoyed it. Okay, you got off with your dad. You fucked your dad. The teacher hears this. He's really disturbed, and he knows you're telling the truth because you never make jokes. And then he reports that he wants to call child services. Okay, let's hear the rest of the story. Services, and let me remind you, my dad and me, we were, it was a secret thing. Like I wasn't supposed <laughs> to go around, going, go around town and tell people who my dad was or anything off? like that. Right, well, that either. <laughs> wow. But it was, you know, I was the secret and I was fine with that. It, it you know, probably psychologically affected me a little bit, being a that secret he, that kid. That he wasn't your dad or that he was in the moff, uh, uh, well, crime syndicate? He, well, he was in that <laughs> and that, but it was like a secret kind of. It and wasn't remember, like, Tony doesn't understand. These are Hollywood actors. They're not actually in the mob and they probably like are sickened by the mob okay and they've probably heard some really disturbing stories uh you know while they did this sopranos life that they you know her whole life is just the sopranos okay she doesn't think this is as glamorous as you you know she's not some imagine thinking that the mafia is cool first of all you know this just that's crime your dad killed someone you know I, you don't like uh it, this is the same guy who every fucking week lets us know did you know in la they just let you rob the stores and they don't arrest these scumbags wow yep they just let you rob your car and loot the store and you call the police they won't do anything about it those liberal people your dad <laughs> you're he's an admit he did way worse so if you hate crime so much when it's committed by black people <laughs> and the Hispanics, you should hate your dad the most. But no, you glamorize your dad's life of crime, pretending that you basically are Anthony Jr. Like my dad is blah, blah, blah. Right. Wow. I yeah, have yeah. a different last name than my dad. I took oh, the last shit. name of the husband that was my mom wanted me to have the same name as my brothers and sisters that were much older than me but with the different dad that she wow. was married to even though they were a lot of dads in your life huh you know how many i have one the normal amount how many dads does this guy have what is he screwing around with one dad fooling around with another taking the name of the mom that's sick anybody here have their mother's maiden name as their guy's last name it's fucking <laughs> That's worse than being trans. Even he is like, you took your mother's last name? That's straight up gay. 
So Tony, that's really embarrassing. I can't believe Tony has his mother's maiden name. You know, that's what you're supposed to be using that for a security question. Not your last name. Whatever. Um, you know, you just didn't get divorced back then. I'm sure you yeah. guys have heard about yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Like you just you come from lived a family in separate, 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 separate bedrooms. You, right. you yeah. didn't get divorced. And my dad was going through the same thing. Separate bedrooms from his wife and just banging my mom. Oh, for and 11- his mom, by the way, is utterly disgusting. She's so old. She's so fat. The fact that your mafia dad would bang this bitch is disgusting. And you sat around while all these men railed your fucking mom who looks like like a Catholic school teacher. Same thing. Separate bedrooms from his wife and just banging my mom for 11 years, by the way, until I was made. So they had like a super secret romance. Anyway, so Mr. Gilmartin wanted to make a fucking stink, not realizing what he was dealing with. So he has the principal call Children's Services. They track down who my dad was Uh. and call him. And, uh, you know, (laughs) my dad basically is like, I'm sure he was making a fucking joke. What are you guys (laughs) talking about? But this Mr. Gilmartin applied the pressure, blah, 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 blah. Long story short. I, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, it's crazy. Come the but he wasn't a teacher there much longer. And uh, <laughs> my mom and I are at the grocery store a few months later and he's stacking uh, cantaloupes, cantaloupes in the produce section, <laughs> section of the grocery store. His new job wearing the apron and not seeming happy. And it's very much. You're like- almost as good as Howie Mandel's daughter at podcasting. You're really good. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This could be on one of these fappening pages here. <laughs> you want to put this on the fappening? Sopranosfappening.net.org? No. There's going to be a lot of pop-up ads with this one. <laughs> oh, you don't care at all. This is the face a girl makes when they well, could give a fuck. Well, he long story shorted the part that would be the most interesting. interesting. Like, yeah. how did this go down? Did you come into school one day and the teacher was fired? Did the dad tell you it was because of well, him? Well, let's hear. I think he's insinuating that his dad is such a powerful figure in the town that anyone who messes with his kid immediately disappears. Like the, uh, again, I can't believe you guys haven't seen the fucking show. Yeah. But... Uh, there, the, there's a guy that gave yes. uh, um, Tony a ticket, and he ends up working in like a gardening. Yes. Uh, yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes. So it's a scene. You're, it just happens. A story that no one could confirm from a dead teacher and a missing dad. <laughs> it just so happens it's exactly one of your favorite scenes from The Sopranos. I think I have a scene of The Sopranos that maybe you've been a part of. It goes like this. It's a joke. <laughs> It's the only part of The Sopranos you've done. Oh, and you wow. see the guy. And you Can I give feel you my guilty. picture and resume to play your mom in the show? Like, yeah. oh Shut my god, up, this is bitch. crazy. You get fifty six k. Goes on and on and on. So That's you... just the first one I thought of. I mean, if I sat down I'm and really sure. thought about it, I could go on and on and well, on. Well, think about it. Go you, on and on. Uh, your character, like figuring it out, and you telling him like you don't know i have an older sister who literally had that conversation yeah, with me. yeah. like you're you can't talk about it it's a thing oh, wow. it's our own thing you can talk with me about it but you can't His talk dad had a jerk off italian restaurant and every guy who owns an italian restaurant because they'll they might know a guy from a guy and a guy and then their kids think oh my dad's in the mafia here your dad wasn't in the mafia. You had no money. The only difference between Tony Soprano and your dad is you weren't rich. That's what you say here at 38. 35, 35. 35, 35. 35. Here we go. Listen to this. Like, I love Donnie Brasco. Oh, like, love. another like, I horrible think it's film. And I think the reason I like it is because it doesn't glamorize being in the mafia. You See, know what they're I mean? against mafia glamorification. They think that's, like, sickening to them. They've heard too many bad stories here. Tony is really into, like, telling people, oh, yeah, my dad was actually in the mafia. That's really fucking stupid to tell people. And not cool. So, okay, so you're, uh, you come from a family of liars and crooks? And I'm to believe that you're any different? Because you seem to think your dad was pretty awesome. So how many crimes do you commit? Because I'm getting roofie stories every day here. From people that are very non-believable, by the way. But their stories, nonetheless, a lot of stories about you going Cosby. 
at the comedy store with your uh, roofie buddy, uh, Jeff Jeff Ross, who is also, I've heard wow, a lot yeah. of stories. You and Jeff Ross spent a lot of time together with your rousts. I'm sure you and Jeff Ross have done something bad. I just know it. And your nervousness, whenever someone starts telling a story about something that uh, you're unsure of, especially when it's at the comedy store, you get a little nervous, don't you? What did you and Jeff Ross do? Because I get it all the time. Fellow comedians. Oh, you got it. This Jeff Ross is real bad. The Roast Master General, Jeff Ross. A lot of horror stories about women from him, right? Yes. We read them every day in the paper. So, Tony, and that was Tony's mentor, which we're going to find out next. I mean, like, they show the guy who's like, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to pay the bills. But he's like, you know, doing all this shit. So I wanted to know, like, what? What was like the non glamorous side of like living that lifestyle? Were there times where you were like, yo, this like the bad parts? Well, really a lot of it because the the difference between my life and the Sopranos was that Tony Soprano was making, I think, a lot more money than, um, you know, my family was. Okay, so there you have the only difference between him and the Sopranos, Tony would make a little bit more money. So, Tony's been doing this media tour, a very glamorous media tour, <laughs> hopping from pod to pod. Uh, he just told them, you guys are very lucky to have me. I don't really do podcasts. Well, here he is on Howie Mandel. 